I fervently hope that MT is not just about competing and winning awards. Most importantly, it has to be about cultivating an innovative mindset within the society, bringing entrepreneurs as well as scientific and technology community, tech communities together to find common ground by collaborating and working towards bringing better technology solutions, innovative products to the world. I hope that this three days event will provide substantial opportunities for participants from multifarious backgrounds to not only display their innovations and inventions, but also to seize the opportunity to interact, discuss and exchange ideas on the latest techniques and technology that will eventually benefit all, inshallah. MTE provides a conducive platform for innovators to promote their invention through various innovative approaches as well as to expand. So this exhibition also allows them to find potential investors or customer to help in marketing and commercializing their invention products in the market. We need to continuously inspire, ignite and innovate our youth to make sure that they will become prosumer. We want to thank our partners, uh, Protan Group and team with over 20 years experience in organizing such an event for making this possible. We came from Poland, Vietnam, country Croatia, Iran, and the Taiwan, Bali, Indonesia. So far, it's been extremely interesting to see a broad range of technical and scientific endeavors. We made a lot of contacts regarding next step with the uh, university community and with real sector community. We are very glad uh, we are here and uh, for this uh, great exhibition. Very high performance and uh, that we show what the technology we have. It is indeed my privilege to welcome all participants to the Malaysia Technology Expo 2020 Special Edition, the COVID-19 International Innovation Awards. Thank you for joining us, especially all the international participants. Saya bagi pihak uh, Nadmah Malaysia uh, mengucapkan terima kasih dan juga
Datuk Syabas kepada NTE 2020 COVID-19. It is my pleasure to join you today at the Malaysia Technology Expo NTE 2020 Special Edition COVID-19 International Innovation Awards Ceremony to recognize and celebrate the hard work of those among us who constantly push the boundaries of innovation. I would like to congratulate all the winners as well as your team members who have been supporting you throughout your journey. MTE 2021 Virtual Edition will be the catalyst in encouraging innovators and inventors to share and inculcate innovativeness and sustainability in their research. Innovation is not just about making new and better products. It encompasses all aspects of ideas, processes, systems, services, methods and models. As large gatherings are no longer encouraged, I'm happy to see that the MTE has gone virtual. This will allow more innovators and to, to promote their innovation and share their ideas with the world. We look forward to university putting a strong effort to forge strategic collaboration with industry to generate new sizes, innovations and commercial activities. There may come a day in the near future when we have overcome this crisis, but our innovation may be able to assist another country in the fight against the pandemic. To lift student engagement and attainment in innovation and to support teachers and improve student outcome, innovation and techno brand mind. Involving youth at an earlier stage is important, especially as Malaysia is slowly but surely becoming a grey nation. Innovation alone is not sufficient. We must also create an infrastructure for incubation of ideas and transform them into successful ventures. Enhancing not only in the design but also the delivery of public goods and services for the people. Innovation in government is imperative not only to transform but also to stay ahead of change. The quick responses to protect the citizens from COVID-19 shows the unity of the nation. Know that your contribution is critical to the transformation of our country. I'm fully confident that this year's MPE IIA, albeit on a new normal platform and approach, has achieved its desired impact. It has been nurturing the innovation culture among scientists, researchers, students and startup founders in order for them to transform their ideas into business ventures. Knowledge Resources for Science and Technology Excellence Malaysia or Chris.my is a knowledge management portal for research and development, R&D. It is spearheaded by MOSTI to address science and technology challenges faced by the Science, Technology and Innovation STI community. Let's explore more with our mascot, Chris. Chris.my has six main information modules. STI organization provides basic information on organizations involved in R&D activities and other STI-related services. Malaysian Human Resources in STI, My HR STI, contains human resource profiles such as researchers and experts involved in R&D activities in the field of STI. National Scientific Facilities and Equipment, NSFE, aims to encourage the sharing of facilities and equipment and cultivate research collaboration among the STI community. You can also book FNE via portal or mobile app. R&D Project Bank shows lists of information on research, development and commercialization projects throughout the Malaysia plan as well as its output and achievements. Technology Market or TechMart promotes local products or technologies and boosts technology transfer among researchers and industry. STI Indicator is used to measure the performance of STI in Malaysia based on goals established by the government. 
Chris.my empowers you to formulate STI policies based on STI data, streamline and optimize R&D resources, practice data-driven decision-making, harness scientific knowledge for new invention and innovation. Our new features will allow elastic search, automatic email notification, mass upload, live update, dynamic report, online booking. Be a part of Chris.my to explore the explosion of scientific knowledge and information. Chris, connecting you to the world of innovation. Ladies and gentlemen, our next lined up program is a knowledge sharing session. Please enjoy. Hello everyone, good morning. Welcome to the COVID-19 International Innovation Awards exhibition and also our knowledge sharing session. Today, we are very happy to have Stem Cell Foundation. They are going to have a special demonstration and also a roundtable discussion on Ignite STEM interest to combat COVID-19 AI game addiction. So the tagline is, Ada, Asa, Suda. Ada, which is actually AI drug addiction. Asa, which is actually AI STEM addiction. We are happy to have Mr. Miro, Mr. Peng Chu from the Stem Cell Foundation Incorporated in Australia. We have Mr. Sange, we have Anche Nur Suhaili, we have Mr. Adil Akbar, we have Miss Srijana, we have Mr. Gabriel, and we have Miss Pava Nasuta. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I would like to hand over the floor to Mr. Miro and Mr. Peng. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Juan Noran for this uh, kind uh, introduction. And uh, salam alaikum. And uh, good day to all our friends from so many countries. Um, name a few here who is going to share their experiences are from India. Dr. Winston Jacob, member of the British Empire, based in Bangalore. Then we have, uh, um, from Bhutan, where we did a lot of work there since 2018. Uh, uh, head of department, Sange Chedok and uh, Sri Jana, all oh, welcome. And thank you so much for joining us. And then from Thailand, we have uh, Dr. Jerry Lat and Dr. Sompon. And I'm sure I'll see a few more uh, names there, Nina and, um, and uh, Hamida all oh, from Prince of Songkla uh, University, uh, very near to uh, Malaysia in the south of Thailand. And they are highly networked university with, uh, uh, within Thailand as well as, as Europe, which I understand has about 19 universities networked to uh, research on STEM uh, education. So, and then obviously we have, um, um, from Cameroon, who, uh, Gabriel, who is studying in uh, Turkey in TED University. He will be sharing his experience too. And uh, of course, uh, our own uh, South Australian government representative, uh, Adil Akbar, um, who is with the High Commission of, uh, of uh, Australia in Kuala Lumpur. And so, again, welcome from so many places. And thank you for joining us to share this uh, stage uh, to um, go on to sharing of our experiences on how to ignite STEM interest in order to uh, solve this uh, problem of many dimensions caused by COVID-19. And uh, one of the um, um, area of interest is obviously um, in artificial intelligence uh, games, which is uh, uh, causing a lot of uh, uh, problem 
I suppose in most families that we have uh, experienced uh, during this lockdown and uh, a lot of time was spent on these very addictive games as uh, one Norant uh, introduced, uh, we call it ADA, AI drug addiction. And then uh, how do we counter that, combat that? We, we hope that we can ignite interest in STEM to the point where we can uh, have all these uh, network of experts, professors, and uh, specialized in STEM to come up with solution that could be more addictive than uh, AI games addiction. So we call that ASA. So AI STEM addiction, uh, which uh, Miro will demonstrate. Uh, I'm sure even adults will be uh, very interested in uh, seeing how they can control drones from different countries um, to uh, the drone in Australia. So the other thing that I want to maybe touch on is uh, close to our hearts is how this COVID-19 has also created even bigger problem for these uh, people in need of help who have $2 in the pocket. So one story that appeared on television at the height of the pandemic last year uh, is a story of villagers who went to big cities like uh, Jayapur, uh, Mumbai, Delhi to work and lost their jobs. They have to walk 200 kilometers back to the village. And one story has it that uh, uh, thanks to this reporter, Emma Elberati from Australia, together with uh, Bakar Tat, uh, I think she's a very famous reporter from India. Uh, they were following these uh, villages uh, back to their village, walking 200 kilometers, and having to sell their mobile phone to buy food along the way. And unfortunately, um, the father committed suicide uh, when they arrived at the village. And so how do we help these people in poverty? We're using STEM as a solution. So the idea that we came about is maybe to make a STEM QR code to help these poor people um, to stick it onto the rich man's uh, breakfast, the bread, the coffee, the meal, and help them to win competitions. So the point here is, can the poor people using STEM technology to help the rich to become richer? So that QR code, when the rich man, when I say rich man, it's just the average middle class people compared to those people who have only a dollar in the pocket. So can this rich men then get richer by, for instance, uh, through the QR code, their children winning STEM competitions using this technology that uh, is invented in Australia that can reduce uh, programming time from months to hours and winning uh, scholarships and then hopefully get jobs 12 months before they graduate, which we all have case studies like that already. So why not help these poor people to make the rich richer? It's the other challenge that uh, is caused by this uh, COVID-19 as we have witnessed globally today. So I think um, I'm very heartened by the fact that uh, these uh, four words only that we need in order to connect people together is um, hours instead of months to make STEM projects, which include internet of things and artificial intelligence. So that would be very uh, uh, much of interest to uh, uh, reduce the time to market to uh, students, teachers, engineers alike. And so I believe through this network, these uh, case studies could be uh, presented globally um, through many 
uh, teachers association like uh, the one headed by uh, uh, Chegu Suhaili in Malaysia. He is uh, the chairman of uh, PGSM, or in English we call it uh, MASTA, Malaysia Association uh, of uh, STEM teachers. And uh, so even uh, through organization like ATO, the um, uh, Asia Regional Training Development Organization, uh, which has presence in about 40 plus countries, just open up an office or liaison office in Washington, DC. And so we've been uh, invited to head the technology committee of this Asia Regional Training Development Organization. So in a nutshell, I think uh, our interest is to try to get a federation of STEM association going in ASEAN. So call it ASEAN STEM Federation. Just a name that we can also apply to the South Asia countries like uh, uh, the eight countries, uh, South Asia Association of Regional Cooperation, the SAC countries. So forming uh, again STEM Federation that will connect all these uh, uh, teacher groups, regional training organizations together. So I think with this uh, technology, the aim of this uh, ADA Asa Suda is just one aspect that we want to discuss today, uh, which uh, I think to prove the four words, uh, hours instead of months, in order to uh, make this uh, fun and exciting and engaging STEM projects, to make it even more addictive with uh, Internet of Things, and artificial intelligence. And so I, I hope that uh, through the Q&A, you all have uh, questions uh, for us to, to try to uh, hopefully uh, share even more ideas. And, 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 and finally, uh, I want uh, to share also the idea of, as we uh, see what Miro is going to demonstrate, I would like everybody to think about the creativity part of this whole process. Because we believe that uh, you, we could have the best technologies of uh, 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 making STEM excited uh, and ignite STEM interest in, in, in students to replace their addictive games. I think creativity plays a huge part in this whole process. And so measure the creativity as we speak, as we demonstrate and, uh, and see whether we can uh, combine this creativity with uh, what we are trying to resolve here. So I'll hand over now to Miro to uh, do the demonstration. And then uh, after that, uh, we'll invite uh, a number of uh, uh, speakers to uh, share their experiences also. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Peng. Um, thank you very much. So um, I'm going to just uh, run through quickly on a few slides about the technology as well. Okay, so uh, Peng, Peng actually mentioned this replacing the AI game addiction, which is the uh, adder, with um, AI STEM addiction. So adder as a pseudo. So what we want to do then is in the home, we want to create a smart home. So we're talking about internet of things. Internet of things means that uh, we have home automation. We can turn things on and off from the internet. Everything is connected to the internet. And also it then can connect into artificial intelligence, the AI part of it as well. So this is actually um, very important. This is what we're uh, talking about today. So we're using this to engage students for STEM. So we're using a new technology, which is RunLink. RunLink technology, which I will show you. So what is RunLink? Well, RunLink actually is um, able to do, uh, in just in six lines of code, you can create uh, an intruder alarm. So with one line of code, that intruder alarm can have vision um, and then with two more lines of code, the intruder alarm can have two buttons to turn on and off the alarm. 
And then with three more lines of code, you can add text to voice AI synthesis. So this means just with six lines of code, you can create this artificial intelligence IoT, which I will demonstrate. Okay, so um, I will show the demonstration by actually um, showing you with my mobile phone camera what is being uh, controlled over here in Australia. And I have uh, Hamley uh, over there in Malaysia who will be opening uh, the web page. But I will show you um, where that web page is coming from. So I am uh, just changing over to my phone camera now. Good. OK, that's good. So I have here on my table in Australia, I have a controller. And Hanley is opening a web page which is inside this Wi-Fi chip. So this Wi-Fi chip on the top of the controller um, is a little computer on the internet. All the computers share the web pages. So it is shared everywhere. And this little microchip is sharing a special web page to be able to develop IoT and AI for STEM very quickly and easily. It can connect, for example, to uh, inputs and outputs. An output is on the blue wire, and that is to be able to switch this box, which can magnetically switch then a lamp, for example. So this is a signal uh, on C4. So Hanley, if you can uh, open that page and we can see then your screen. Okay, very good. So um, Hanley, if you go then to C4, um, maybe if you can expand the screen a little bit bigger, we can see it. C4, if you make that a digital out, on C4, so select C4 digital out. Okay, good. And then we have uh, a button and that button means that there is a signal here, but the signal is off. So Henry, can you press the button just to check if there is a connection here to the wire? And then immediately everyone can see that the lamp actually turns on because there is a connection. Because remember the web page Henley has opened in Malaysia is actually based on this chip. So there's a connection, very good. Okay, so Hanley type in the word lamp, but of course we could um, also, this could be a fan, it could be a pump for water, could be many things to turn on and off. Okay, very good. I also have input. Input sensors are important for data. So we can measure data, we can log the data. Um, this is a light sensor which goes to C7. And Lee, can you please activate C7 analog in on the web page? So analog in. And immediately you see that there is a number which is actually um, streaming onto the web page. 240 at the moment because the lamp has light on the light sensor. So um, Hanley, if you turned off the lamp, then that number will go down. So click the lamp off. Okay, the lamp has been turned off. The number has gone down. Okay. Good. And then if I cover my hand with the sensor, then the number will go down even further. So you see the number has gone down even all the way to 40. And if I uncover my hand, then the sensor number goes up again. This is a light sensor, but it could be a temperature sensor. It could be a moisture sensor, many other inputs for data. So Hanley on C7, please put the word sensor. Okay, very good. And now because we have the uh, sensor and a lamp, then in JavaScript loop, we can very quickly then make also this automated. So Runlink is a development page. We can develop IoT AI projects. Please type in the word uh, if, which means we will make a decision, lowercase if, if, and it will then measure 
uh, we will then compare the sensor. So IF and then the round brackets. Okay, good. And then uh, you don't need to. Okay, thank you. You can also use the macros to do that as well. Okay, the analog in actually needs to have an uppercase I as well to make sure that it's correct. Otherwise, with the macros, then that's done automatically. So uppercase I. Okay, very good. And then on the next line, we're going to then um, turn on. So you can select the macro, show how the macro works on. There's a macro button there. So select that one and press turn on and select the lamp. Okay, and we have a log, oh, turn on lamp, makes it easier for inputs, outputs. The next line would be else. We will be checking uh, if also it is greater than 120, and then we'll turn off the lamp. So select, turn off, and then we can place the lamp. Thank you. So only four lines of code. And now, Henley, if you go up to, uh, next to the stop code, press the run code button, then immediately it will go green. And then when I put my hand on the light sensor, when it goes below 120, less than 120, okay, then the lamp actually turns on. So you can see the lamp is on. When I release my hand, it turns off. And on the web page, you can see the numbers and the buttons turn on and off. Now in the HTML, we will create a simple web page quickly. So in there, we'll, we'll put um, the triangle brackets and then put in uh, H1. So lowercase h1 means that this will be a heading and then finish the bracket the other way. Okay, that's good. And then type in Type in uh, MTE alarm control web page. Okay, a special alarm control web page, which we are making very quickly. Okay, for uh, MTE. Okay, alarm control web page. So this is the text on the top. And then we put in the triangle brackets, the slash H1. And then press the stop code. And if we press run code again, press stop code and run code, then you see the lower part of the page already has MT alarm control web page. Very fast for students to get started. They can see what is happening immediately. One line of code and they can check the line of code. Very important because otherwise too many lines of code are very hard to check the code. Okay, go to the next line in the HTML and we will create two buttons in this code. So in the triangle bracket, we'll put the lower, uh, the word lowercase button, the word button, and this is a normal HTML button and on click equals, and then put in the quotation mark, turn on buzzer. Okay, uh, turn on with a uppercase, to make sure that um, it is actually the function of turning it on and then end the quotation mark then uh, finish the triangle bracket end of bracket and then on the top we'll put alarm on okay very good and then at the end we need to put the slash button very good so if we go up and press the stop code and then press run code again. Then under our heading, we see a button which says alarm on. Okay. Now the button will not work because we haven't defined this. So it's trying to connect to this. How do we connect on run link? Go up to C5, Henley, C5. Very, very easy, very quick. Go to C5, select digital out and then type in the same word buzzer that we have in the code. Okay, needs to be lowercase also, like the code. Okay, 
And when it's the same, then we can simply press stop code, run code, and then it is connected. So run link will connect. It will connect the inputs and outputs to the web page. Now, Henley, if you press that button, then it will be connected to the buzzer. So if you go down, we can hear the buzzer very loud here in Australia. So loud it goes from Australia to Malaysia, very loud. Better turn it off, Henley. C5, click on that one. Okay, we better make an off button. So go up and then um, copy the line and we can quickly uh, make an off button as well. So if you copy the on button in the HTML, make an off button, very good. So it now says turn off and alarm off at the top. So press the stop code and the run code again. And then we have uh, two buttons. Do the two buttons work on our web page? Um, alarm on and alarm off. Okay, very good. So um, then just with two lines of code, we can create two buttons on a web page to turn anything on and off from anywhere, even from Malaysia to Australia or from anywhere in the world. It actually takes many lines of code, over a hundred lines of code to do this on compatible technologies such as Arduino was 20 pages of, of instructions how to make a web page with two buttons. So now we will show you how the running can connect to many other things. Also voice, like in JavaScript, we can have three lines of code for voice, one line of code for video in, into like a CCT camera on our web page, but we can also connect into um, this device here because it is Wi-Fi. So the running can connect to Wi-Fi devices. This is a drone here in Australia. We will connect. And if you press the stop code, press the stop code, and then press the get button, get button, okay, then uh, we see that there is code inside the chip because you can put the code inside the chip to run the page. And you see in the HTML, we also have buttons. These buttons also have some, some CSS, which is graphics to make them larger, but otherwise they're the same buttons. So on click equals drone up, etc. And also in the JavaScript loop, we see that it still has the sensor and this code in the JavaScript loop, um, the last box, the loop box actually says less than 80 and it says turn, turn on lamp, but it also has speech synthesis, which says that alert, alert, there's an intruder coming. So when, when the intruder comes, then when the intruder comes to this sensor, then it will actually uh, say the voice and then it will activate the drone. So it says drone takeoff, drone up 50, drone counterclockwise. So the next, next thing we're going to connect also is this Wi-Fi drone. And this Wi-Fi drone is also connected to the network now. So the run link can, can connect to it and can control it with that web page. So I'll put this uh, drone here on the floor. Okay, good. So uh, now open your uh, web page um, by pressing the run code. So if you press the run code and then scroll down, then you see the page, everything clearly, the camera view, we have height data. So press the start commands. Drone command. Okay, and then the drone actually um, now is ready to take commands and also to get data. So click on the temp degree C. Temp degree Drone get C, temp. And we see that it's uh, 67 degrees on the chip and the battery level. So click on battery. We can get data from the battery. Drone get battery. Okay, 94%, very good. So now let's see if we can take off the drone and we can see the height data. So press take off. Drone take off. Okay, so the drone now has taken off. You can press up and it will go higher as well. Drone up 20. 
Okay, and a little bit higher, and we can see that on the graph as well when we check the graph. Okay. All right, very good. So we can turn the train, try turning it then um, clockwise, turn clockwise. Drone CW90. Okay, so the drone now is turning and you can see that also reflected on the camera. You turn once more. Drone CW90. Okay, very good. And also uh, let's now do a flip. So you can press the left flip, press the left flip. Drone flip L. Okay, so got the command and did you see that? Wow, okay, excellent, flip. Let's flip it to the right as well. Flip it to the right. Drone flip R. Okay, so remember this is actually across the internet. We can do a local connection and it'll be very fast. Okay, I think it's... Uh, very good. So maybe you'll land the drone now. It's actually flipped close to me. So let's land the drone. Drone land. Press the land button. Okay. And so it will actually then go down. Okay. Just here. All right. Very good. I'll put it over here now. And uh, remember that we also have the sensor. So this is automatic. Uh, so we've set it so that if an intruder actually comes and goes and gets sensed, then the drone should automatically look for the intruder. That's what we've programmed. So let's now activate the sensor. The intruder is coming. The intruder has then blocked. Alert intruder detected sending security drone. Drone take off. Okay. Drone up 50. So now it's actually drone CW asking for the drone to go up. Drone so the drone CW has actually gone up. And it's asked for it to go through a certain sequence as well. Okay. So you can see on the camera that it's actually looking around. Looking around. Okay. It can see me. I'm an intruder. That's not very good. Okay. So... It's found, I think it's found me, found the intruder. Okay, I think I better go away. So I'm going to uncover the sensor now and I'm going to leave Has gone. and see whether the All drone safe. actually will then drone land. go down. Okay, so you see, I tell the drone to actually go back down. Okay, I'm gone now. Drone, okay, I'm no longer on your sensor. So let's see if the drone will actually land as well. All right, very good. Okay, I think it's I think it still knows I'm here. All right. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, it took notice of the sensor. Very good. Okay, thank you very much. You can see all that on the uh, height graph as well and all the data. Okay, very good. So that's my uh, demonstration of the drone. Thank you. Hi, I'm Adil Akbar from South Australia Trade and Investment Team. I would like to congratulate MTE 2021 for their 20th anniversary. Stay safe. Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Ahmed from Kuwaiti Team. Congratulations MTE for this big event. Happy 20th anniversary. Thank you for this amount of positive energy you are giving to everybody. Okay, so if, if I can please invite um, uh, Adil Akbar, who is uh, at the working for the South Australian government in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia, to actually say a few words. Thank you. Thanks for the introduction, and it's a delight to be here. Quite an act to follow you, Miro, after your live drone stem demonstration. 
Um, however, let me start by particularly thank Peng Chu and yourself, Miro, from Stand Cell Foundation for inviting me to give a short address at this virtual session in Malaysia's Technology Expo 2021 for COVID-19 International Innovation Awards. I also would like to thank the other distinguished speakers at this session who comes from around the world. And I'm sure what they will be sharing with you today will be insightful and meaningful. I believe the organization behind this technology, which is Stem Cell Foundation Australia, from South Australia requires no further introduction. As we saw in the previous demonstration, Runlink platform developed by Stem Cell Foundation is a disruptive Australian technology using Wi-Fi to revolutionize programming using a web browser. This technology reduces programming time from months to merely just hours using a web browser. For example, it merely takes six lines of codes to create an intruder alarm, two lines to make a web page and three lines to produce an artificial intelligence voice. And this can be easily programmed by a student as young as standard four or 10 years old. This platform allows young students to be quickly introduced and construct artificial intelligence projects such as in Internet of Things, drones, and also other DIY smart home kits as shown in the demonstration before this. It is also the perfect platform to help transform students from game addiction into an AI STEM addiction, also known as ASA. It is our hope to ignite STEM interest in the young minds to explore and create innovations in response to COVID-19. As we are all aware, the impact of digital disruption is being felt across the world, but the challenge can be met head on if our education system from the earliest years through to further education embraces an innovation mindset. Innovation is the best way to keep pace with change. In today's digital age, children must not only be able to access new technologies, but take full advantage of the vast array of information and opportunities that new technologies make available. It is the only way to create the next generation of researchers, innovators, and digitally literate citizens prepared for the jobs of the future. As a representative of South Australian state to Malaysia, I'm pleased to share that our state world leading capabilities in artificial intelligence is helping us to build global collaborations with major tech firms. Our, glo our global reputation has attracted the world's biggest technology companies focused on creating future technologies. Just recently, Amazon Web Services moved into our state, closely followed by Google Cloud. They are seeking to collaborate with the internationally recognized homegrown expertise within our own Australian Institute for Machine, for Machine Learning from the University of Adelaide, the MIT Big Data Living Lab, the Australian Research Centre for Interactive and Virtual Environments, and the Australian Cyber Collaboration Centre. Recently, at the end of last year, Australia and Malaysia has signed an MOU on Technology Exchange Multi-Year Programme via MDEC, which is the Malaysian Digital Economic Corporation, and Austrade, which is Australian Trade and Investment Commission. This is, program is known as the Australian Malaysia Tech Exchange or AMTX. South Australia is glad to be partner of this program and we look forward to collaborate with Malaysia in building our tech ecosystem together. All these developments is part of our state of AI strategy to enable partnerships between companies, researchers, and the education sector. And in doing so, has created space for the blue sky thinking that will ultimately change the way we see the world. Our hope is that Runlink can play a critical role within this space as the first step in the ecosystem by advancing STEM education and build an innovation mindset in our community, not just in Australia, but around the world. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Adil, for um, explaining that uh, so well. Now we have a lineup of many people around, around the world who will be just uh, speaking for uh, about one minute or one and a half minutes, just to explain also what they have uh, also seen uh, as well. Okay, 
Evet. So we we will ask uh, Dr. Winston to actually uh, just to say say a few words uh, next. Uh, thank you, Dr. Winston. Thank you, Miro. Salam alaikum. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Adli, for those interesting comments that you have made, and I'd like to say that this is a wonderful project by Dr. Peng and Maro. They have to be congratulated in this great innovative thing they have discovered. And I can see that this is going to really change the world, especially the Gen Zs who are just the future of this world. I'm uh, thinking of uh, looking at this for the youth, especially the largest youth organization known as the World Scout Bureau. We've got 10 million girl guides and 31 million scouts around the globe in 145 countries. And I can see that this is going to really be beneficial. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Winston. And we look forward to working. Looking at using this STEM as well. Okay, I invite uh, um, Dr. Su Suhaili to then uh, just to speak um, as well. It's Dr. Hello, everyone. A very good morning to uh, Mr. Myrod, mentor Fran Ling. Okay, I'm Stegu Swahili from Prasad Tuan Guru Stay Malaysia. Um, first of all, uh, when we heard about the Ran Ling, Ran Ling made, made me feel like teachers in Malaysia uh, have been left behind. And I did, and yet I wonder how teachers can explore this technology and teach it to students because I know the students will learn faster than us. With the ability to create borderless programming without kids and also just using smartphone, it is so miracle. I believe students in our country will love and enjoy it. What we hope now is we need to focus on special training for teachers, especially who have passionate with new technology in IoT. Any kind of teachers can do it. It is so easy and simple to learn. We can shift 1% of our teachers to be expert in running. We can't wait for years or months, like what uh, Dr. Peng said, hours instead of months, to ignite our young generation. Teachers play an important role on this. They need to know and well train about Runling. We strongly believe Runling STEM education will ignite STEM interest in students starting from primary school, as been mentioned uh, by Mr. Adil Akbar. We also believe Runling will help teachers to save a lot of time to help students make STEM projects that include IoT and artificial intelligence. We are also confident that students will be more addicted to STEM projects rather than online AI games like my, my son also, the editor to the games of handphone. Again, thank you very much for opportunity given to be creative, break the norm. Okay, thank you to Mr. Myro, the inventors of Ranling, and also thanks to Dr. Peng, who introduced Ranling to Malaysia teachers. Thank you very much again. Thanks, Myro. Thank you very much, uh, Suhaili. Um, the next person we have is um, David Tan, and he's in Singapore. Uh, David, if you could say a few words for a minute, thanks. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I've been asked to uh, say a few words at this meeting. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, I look at uh, Runling and the stem cell project from the perspective of uh, the younger generation, uh, our future generation of uh, workers in the industry. 
Uh, I also look at this problem from a very strategic viewpoint. Uh, the, it is known around the world, especially amongst the developed countries, that uh, interest in science and interest in technology and engineering is uh, waning amongst the new students. Uh, uh, in a university environment, uh, uh, it is getting more and more difficult to find talented, uh, good students into these fields. So I see Runling and Stem Cell and their program and their invention as a way to uh, actually ignite uh, passion and uh, interest from these kids, young kids, from a young age uh, and attract them into the fields of science, technology and engineering uh, in order to uh, build our future generation of uh, inventors and innovators. The, very often, uh, uh, you know, at a university, you can see in, uh, for example, I, I used to teach uh, the electrical engineering in NUS, National University of Singapore, and I keep tabs with, uh, uh, with our former colleagues. And, you know, there was a spell where the interest and the en enrollment of these students uh, starts to fall and wane. So the, the, the function of Runling is, uh, in, in this aspect, is to actually ignite the passion for students. Uh, uh, we mentioned Meccano. There are many other things, uh, like Lego, uh, kids, uh, chemistry kids, uh, engineering kids. And I myself, when I was young, uh, was uh, bought an electrical engineer's kit for Christmas. So it started from there. And, and, and right from that time when I was 14, uh, the, the interest and passion grew until I went to university. And then I graduated uh, and, and continued uh, along these lines. So my message is for the teachers, especially uh, ignite the interest and the passion amongst the students for science and technology and engineering. Uh, Runling and STEM is a wonderful way to do it. And I think that uh, uh, this will help improve the future generations to come. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, David, um, for your for your insights. It certainly is a big problem with the STEM worldwide. Um, at the Royal University of Bhutan, um, there was actually a study made of Runlink, and we would like um, uh, Professor uh, Sange from that university to please just say a few words on his findings because he did a comparison of this Runlink technology. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you so much. Can you hear me? Yes, now. Uh, yes, we can. Thank you, thank you, Nick. Uh, thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity to to be talking and interacting with you all. I'm from Bhutan. Uh, uh, so yes, like in our recent study, like uh, we actually realized that uh, to make the STEM education a daily language in our education systems, uh, access to this such like uh, STEM educational tools is very important, vital. Uh, so therefore, like uh, as mentioned by earlier speaker, like Runlink uh, is a perfect platform where students can really, really learn and see how really things work. So in the meantime, like I would like to take the permission to share a slide. I have just one slide uh, to share with you all so that I can speak a few words. Sure. Can you see the yep. slides? <clears throat> so yep. uh, this is just like a, this is a, 
uh, a recent study that we actually carried out, how we can actually take the STEM education to the schools. And then these are some of the pictures that where we actually went to the schools and then started uh, introducing them to this like running and STEM cell technology, whereby they were really excited and they were really able to see how really like uh, physical things where they were able to control through the internet and then concept of understanding the IoT, AI and all those like automations, industrial revolution things were much more easy for them to understand when they actually do hands-on than to actually listening to the theoretical concept that is taught in the classrooms. So through this, like uh, we went to the schools, like two schools in particular, and then we actually uh, trained uh, around 10 school teachers, so, like how they can use the STEM cell. And then through a small project, we also distributed around 10 STEM cell kits uh, to the schools. And in line with that, like uh, we actually uh, carried out a simple study on just to compare the STEM cell along with the other like commonly used uh, educational platforms like RunLink. And then from this study, we actually clearly understood that RunLink is much more easy for students to actually uh, understand the things uh, and then easily they can develop the applications. So these actually findings are actually already published in the Stranger uh, in this uh, and lecture notes in electrical engineering. And then we also recently carried out a simple study where we can actually, with the intention to actually uh, transform the STEM education in line with the IoT and STEM AI. And so this actually report is actually uh, yet to be submitted, but we have actually found out like students are very like uh, interested to learn those STEM education by using such uh, educational platforms. So, so that's all, thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Sanke, um, for sharing also your slides. That was, uh, it's very interesting. Thank you. Okay, so um, the next person to speak is uh, Dr. Somporn. Dr. Somporn is actually in Thailand and he has uh, also been uh, helping to uh, test the technology and uh, I believe at the moment, he even has his own drone um, and will be also getting some equipment. So Dr. Zomporn, if you could just uh, say a few words for a minute, that would be good, thanks. Oh, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me to join this uh, chatting session. And I think it's uh, very nice to join and see all the all around the world that is the, to join together with the Runlink technology. And I think it is uh, one point that uh, it will be uh, grow. I mean, it will be grow more and more in the futures. I mean, Sunrunlink is also the online platform that allow us to, to use and start the network of the STEM experiment. Uh, the Runlink is also is a web base that for the student that they can also use it easily. I mean, by reducing the code, normally behind maybe the long code, but we can review it to be like a, a very a simple code for the primary school student or high, uh, high school student can also grow, I mean, from the, the, the short code to be the longer code uh, and longer code in the future that they can also apply not only for the, the IoT, but also embed between the STEM, IoT, AI, image processing, and also other kind of uh, uh, computational sign in the future that we can really like uh, to uh, make drone not only for the Wi-Fi but but it uh, can uh, go far to go to observe the community for example we have like the problem of uh, flooding or the kind of uh, natural disaster management we can also let drone to fly and get information uh, to um, monitor and trying to show that how can uh, the government can help to the to to that region. For example, did this open the new world for the teacher? Normally, we have to set up the room, right? And the people can come, the student can come to the same room, and we learn together, uh, trying to do the coding. 
but now it seems like the 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 coder is far away from the 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 device. For example, I have a drone here, also from the demonstration school that I am trying to to learn at the moment. I don't know, maybe you cannot see it, uh, and it can also help in order to open the new world, new eye, new perspective of the STEM learning path. And I think the STEM learning path is allow us to join together and we can learn the good practice from the other, from uh, different country, for example, from Bhutan, from uh, Africa, from America and many application that it can be used in the future. And I think now it's starting to have the, uh, booming network in order to make this uh, high performance again in the future. And I'm very glad to join this uh, community. And thank you, uh, Dr. Peng and Dr. Uh, Miro very much to let me. And also, I would like to thank to Dr. Dr. Jarirat from Jaren that allowed me to join the, uh, the, the network here. Thank you very much. It would be nice in the future. I, 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 I believe that it will be very useful and I will continue this in Thailand also in order to make it uh, grow more and more. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Sompon. Yeah, we appreciate uh, your view there also from Thailand. Um, so we only have a few more speakers, a couple more. So from Bhutan, I actually have a teacher um, who has also used this, um, Sri Jiana. Uh, Srijana, can you please uh, just say a few words, particularly about the STEM for girls, because sometimes they get missed out. Thank you. Um, respected all. Even today in many social constructs and household, girls are the sole, you know, bearers of domestic chores, which allows them very little time for self-grooming, to study or even learn a new skill. The very reservation of, do I have enough time for this? Do I have enough time to learn this? Or will I be able to do this? Is removed from learning STEM, AI and IoT using Runlink. I believe that gender equality and balance comes from quality education and vice versa. And learning AI, IoT and STEM with Runlink is all about achieving quality education in the shortest span of time, irrespective of gender or age. I believe creativity is sovereign and tools like Runlink just gives them wings. Thank you very much, uh, Srijana, for your very concise words. And we have a good example of that as well. Um, there's a student that is actually with us who has certainly grown wings. I've actually seen her grow wings. So Pavana, if you can uh, describe to you about the growth, the beginning and the growth, just for a minute. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Pavana, a 16-year-old student from Convent Butterworth Secondary School in Penang, Malaysia. So last December, I showcased a smartwatch to detect COVID-19 symptoms using Runlink for an innovation competition. Then my teacher introduced me to Dr. Pang and Mr. Miro. I was also given the responsibility to conduct a seven week running workshop in my school to about 25 students to channel my knowledge in running to my friends and inspire them in the same field. Running promotes gender equality through quality education. It introduces science and technology through simple and fast programming. Such simplicity is the key feature that attracted me. And I strongly believe that others, especially female students, would be inspired in a similar manner, hence encouraging their greater participation in the STEM field. Interestingly, my workshop is a proven result of this. The 25 girls enjoyed the workshops and they were able to run simple projects even in the second workshop. They expressed more interest now in STEM and even have plans to pursue related careers in the future. So currently, my school has undertaken two running based projects. One deals with using a drone to hinder the presence of crows in the school premises. And the other is a mushroom watering system that self-activates during weekends and also school holidays. That's all from me. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Pavana. Excellent. We look forward to seeing more on your projects at the school. This uh, COVID-19 has caused um, people to have to stay at home. And so people have to use the internet. Internet of Things is a specialty of RunLink and the AI. And it has also made the country is actually accessible for remote learning. We have someone all the way from Turkey who we actually met in Cameroon in Africa. And uh, I did the demo to him and he was stunned because um, he's doing masters in computer science. And Gabriel, can you please tell us why you were stunned? Why you were stunned? Hello everyone, good morning. Uh, my name is Gabriel Zincha. I'm a student at Tet University in Turkey. Like uh, Mr. Nero rightly said, I was stunned by the uh, running technology because actually I was working on my graduation project and I was trying to build a home automation system using Arduino's uh, microcontrollers and other third party apps. And it took me quite a lot of time to implement just a simple switch functionality. And once I did the demo about switching on and off light from Cameroon, at that moment I was in Cameroon and I was, uh, Miro was in Australia. So uh, the demo caught me uh, like surprised because I couldn't, uh, I saw what I was doing for months and actually it took just a few minutes to do it. And so I saw that I could actually transform my senior project to using just running and using the right technologies to save time. So I'm actually working with my professor on writing a research paper about comparing the development time with uh, IoT, uh, IoT projects with run link and also and using Arduino. And hopefully we are going to submit this paper to the International Conference of Computer Engineers in Turkey on the 25th of June. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gabriel. And thank you very much for all of the speakers um, that we have here. And um, for those others that have come here, um, I would like also just to invite if anybody just has any closing questions or uh, any comments at this time. And if not, then maybe I can uh, return back to uh, Peng just for some closing comments would be good. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, speakers. It is such a joy to share experiences uh, with so many uh, ideas, experts from so many countries, which I never imagined possible. So one of the good things came about of this um, uh, COVID-19 pandemic, I suppose is a COVID-19 secondary pandemic, which we have identified as AI game addiction, which is uh, tremendously harmful. And so uh, like Dr. Winston uh, from Bangalore rightly say, there's so many of these uh, stakeholders, including scouts in so many countries, 100 over countries, numbering must be over 50 million scouts and boy scouts and girl guides. And uh, that could uh, be part of this uh, program and uh, be able to share their experiences uh, with uh, big techs like Microsoft, like Intel, like Google, and why not also the big four, like PricewaterhouseCoopers, that has uh, released uh, STEM economy research which says if you shift 1% of Australia's uh, workforce to STEM jobs, our GDP, our gross uh, domestic product would increase by 57 billion Australian dollars. So I'll leave you with this thought of applying the same in your own uh, uh, countries of shifting 1% of let's say, um, Thailand's workforce to STEM jobs and ask the primary school students guided by 
teachers as well as by professors. And why not Price Waterhouse Cooper itself that write the report and see how many billions of Thai bahts that uh, the, the, the uh, Thai economy will increase. And we then use this money to help all those uh, po uh, improvised people that have to walk 200 kilometers during this pandemic to go home. And so desperate that uh, they don't even have a home to go to. Uh, so I believe what I said earlier can be done. Let's take up the challenge of helping the poor people to help the rich to become richer and, and leave it to humanity to take its own course and see whether this uh, technology, STEM technology can uh, 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 reduce uh, poverty to, to, to get United Nations um, uh, sustainable development goals implemented from primary school upwards. So thank you again to uh, ProTem for such a wonderful opportunity, which uh, it didn't take a long time to pull together. I think uh, Chegu Suhaili was shocked when his uh, uh, WhatsApp was filled up within 24 hours. And he's been saying that ever since. I had never seen so much interest uh, uh, in, in teachers uh, wanting to uh, see what Miro uh, has invented uh, in uh, flying drones from Malaysia uh, uh, with the drone in Australia. So uh, uh, I hope that uh, this will become a series of uh, uh, webinars uh, through this period and uh, uh, with, with the aim maybe to form, as I say, the Federation of STEM in ASEAN countries, as well as in uh, South Asia. So thank you again for, for all your contribution uh, um, and, and uh, let, let's keep moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, on behalf of the Malaysia to NG Expo COVID-19 International Innovation Awards Part 2, we would like to congratulate everyone on this achievement and testimony. And then we would like to thank everyone for their time uh, participating in this knowledge uh, sharing session. For the ado, I would like to end this. And again, a special thanks to everyone. Let's connect again and let's unite STEM interests to combine COVID-19 AI game addiction. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank